I sacrificed a lot in my life for money. I was a trained killer. Like, yeah. I don't care who you are, I'm going there to make money and I have this guilt now. I think that's one of the biggest lessons for me. On today's episode of Taking Care of Business, we're with the only female associate director, Chloe Kempton. Why do people fail? They don't stick at it. The people that don't overthink are by far the winners. I didn't want to reach a certain age or reach 40 and be like, why didn't I do that? When you look at that journey and that dream life you, you've created, are you proud of that? I'm not really the type of person to go, oh yeah, that we've made it, this is it. Because obviously we've not, there's so much more growth. I just want to be the best that I can possibly be. Hopefully earn loads, <laughs> loads of money. <laughs> do you think it's made you softer being a parent? I wouldn't say softer, I would say I'm more empathetic. What have you learned from living, being married to probably one of the best agents in the history of Dubai real estate. Resilient. On today's episode of Taking Care of Business, we're with the only female associate director, Chloe Kempton, who has been with Allsop for 10 years in multiple divisions. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Yeah, very good. Do you? How does it feel to be known as the most successful female in Allsop and Allsop's history? Yeah, it feels good. Yeah? I feel proud. Good to be here. Do you know why I class you as, um, as one of the most successful people in the business history, historically? Not only just female, but uh, obviously uh, as a, a, someone that works Allsop and Allsop. That's not because of what you do in the office, but I think one thing we'll touch on later on is you've created an incredible life with Rob and yourself and your yeah. kids over 10 years. And I don't mind saying on, on, on podcasts, I think you own one of the best houses in Dubai. <laughs> It is though, isn't it? It's, it's good. Yeah. It is. And that all started, how many years ago did you join also, uh, did join Dubai? So I moved to Dubai 14 years ago. Okay. Uh, you were one, of, were one of the first people I met. Where did we actually. meet? Uh, Trilogy. Is that where it was? <laughs> For Trilogy. That was the rooftop then. It was, yeah, it was. Um, when It was at Alcasa. Yes, okay. Yeah, Alcasa. And I moved out to Dubai then with I think less than a thousand pounds. Who did you move out with? On my own. Okay. I literally, I was a law graduate. I, to be honest, I think my mum got sick of me because I was moving. I'm sending her back. Crazy. I'm sick of you now. <laughs> Send it right. Um, and I literally, with my birthday money, packed, set off to Dubai, packed my suitcase and- How much birthday money did you have to go and leave <laughs> for Dubai? It was a little bit of, it was, I think there was about well, £500 birthday money and then my mum and dad gave me the rest and said, you're going to go and get a job. So you're one of them and you get 500 quid for your birthday. Come on. <laughs> Wild. Yeah, only child. So um, moving to Dubai. Yeah. You didn't join Allsop and Allsop, did you? I didn't. Where did you go? I went Smith and Ken. Okay. And what's Smith and Ken for anybody <laughs> not watching? Uh, Smith and Ken was another real estate company. Okay. Uh, they're no longer open. Okay. Is that um, your fault? No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> but the I actually met the owner of Smith and Ken and mm. you on the same night. Okay. And the owner of Smith and Ken gave me an interview. Did I not give you one? <laughs> no. Oh, wow. Okay. He doesn't want me then. Um but yeah, so so that's where my journey started. And did you start in sales and leasing? Did you all? I did. I started in lettings. Okay. I did lettings on the Palm Jumeirah. Didn't have a clue. No one does what this I was stuff, doing, either. what the Palm was, what the job entailed. I just knew that I really wanted to do it. And I think in that sense, it was really good because I was a blank canvas. Yeah. I, haven't, I hadn't had a full-time job before. Yeah. So it was like, this is what you need to do to be successful. I had very little money and I didn't tell Your birthday money. <laughs> no, that was almost <laughs> gone. Um, and I just followed the what I was supposed to do. I didn't really go out because I couldn't afford to. You don't really go out anyway. Unless it was free. And then, yes, that's... Did you, did you think it was... Um, do you think it's harder to do the job as in startup now? Or do you think going back to... 14 years ago, moving to the right. What do you think? Do you think? Because a lot of people do fail in real estate, don't they? And yeah. you are an anomaly for someone that's not only su gone on to succeed, but extraordinarily succeed. So, what's the difference between somebody you think in, who starts 14 years ago versus someone that starts now? Like, why do people fail? I think people fail because 
they don't stick at it. Mm. They're not consistent. And they think, oh, well, why would I do that? Because I've spoken to 200 people and nobody's interested. I feel like they think it's a quick, get rich quick. And it's not. 14 years later, you can tell me. Definitely not. It's about being consistent and consistent and doing the basics well. Mm. And also be willing to learn. Yeah. And I think not be sensitive. I think that's one of the biggest lessons for me. Are you, you, do you, would you say before real estate, you were a sensitive soul? Definitely. Really? I would never oh, know that. Sense. I still am. But I think you just, it's not personal. Yeah. It, if you're not performing and someone tells you, then you've got two ways of looking at it. You can be upset about it or you can be upset and use it as a drive to push you on and yeah. go, okay, what do I need to do? Do you think, I mean, I've owned the business now for 16 years and been here for 18 years. Do you think that the way that the new generation of uh, agents or new people coming through the ranks, not just an up and all sort, do you think they still respond well to, hey, you've had a bad fucking week, like sort it out? Or do you think people get butt hurt in today's world? I think some do, some don't. Okay. I also think it's it's so different now, mm. starting off as a broker. The fundamentals are the same, but <laughs> so I'm going to sound old here, but there was an Instagram. Yeah. Facebook had just started. Yeah. I think there was there was one property portal, which was DeBizzle. Yeah. Property finder were just coming through. And you had the difference then and now, and I've thought about this a lot lately, was we had properties, but you were trying to find buyers or trying to find tenants, mm. whereas now it's, it's the, the opposite. Around. And also you had to try and convince people to come to, to, to Dubai, the- whereas now people are coming. It's know. crazy when you think about the market when you started. Yeah. When you talk about that market a minute ago, that there's never a bad market. There's either no. a buyer's market or a seller's yeah. market. And yeah. the time that you're talking about, uh, that sits heavily on a seller's market, meaning yeah. that there's a lot of uh, a lot of sellers uh, and not a lot of buyers. Is that right? Yes. Not a lot of. Yeah, there's a lot of sellers, not a lot of buyers. Trying to convince a buyer when the market's going down. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you need to buy, and yeah. they're reading the news going, yeah. "Market's crashing." Yeah, it's tough. How did you get around that? Because there's a lot of people. And the reason I say this, a lot of people in, in Allsop and Allsop yeah. have joined in the last five, six, seven years, yeah. have never seen the other market. Now, that yeah. doesn't scare me. No. You've been through it. Yeah. How do you deal with that as a broker? I think you have to adapt. Mm-hmm. You know, the way that, you know, we, we've done it loads as a business where you, you start something, mm-hmm. you trial it, and you think, right, okay, let's discuss it. It's not worked. Mm-hmm. So which way do we approach it? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's the same and I think it's now and specifically and I'm, I'm seeing now being in the private office, yeah. it's not just enough to know your community inside out, you know, know your fees, know the transfer process. You have to know everything. So, and that comes down to materials. Mm. It comes down to interest rates, you know, structures of business, up, yeah. everything. Um, I don't think it's enough anymore just to plod through. Especially at the higher level. I mean, if you yeah. take me as an example, my property's sitting in SPV, which is a foundation, and and that's done for asset protection and continuation of life after me passing in, hopefully not too long, where it takes <laughs> on. You've been through this today, I believe you, with our partners at MHQ today. Yes, yes. And the education that we try and give and you pass on to other people yeah. uh, about foundation SPVs and structures, especially yeah. at the higher level, I think you need yeah. to know that today. Hundred percent. I think your clients expect a lot more. Mm. If you don't know, they can go to somebody else. Yeah. So it's within our interests as brokers to try and I don't know, level up yeah. as much as you possibly can. And I don't think that it's it's evolving. You're yeah. not. It's never like okay today. I'm I'm done. Yeah. I know everything. You never know everything. There's there's always something new that you can learn and. You know, for me, if I don't know, then I'll try and find out. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Well, the, the biggest change I've seen in our business is when I go onto the sales floor and the sales floor isn't popping like yeah. it used to. It's and quieter. It, it annoys me. And yeah. I'm just like, fucking hell, like, yeah. pick up the phone. But mm-hmm. I have to take a step back and realize that 
including me, I live on WhatsApp. Yeah. And if somebody calls me, I'm like, what do you want? Voice yeah. note me. I know it sounds really bad. I sound really old yeah. saying that. But have you found that people are using the phone less for direct phone calls or what's your what's your stance on this? I think it depends. I think if a relationship's already there, yeah. then someone is more willing to have that conversation with you. And it's not, that takes time. Mm. So I think yes and no. I, th I think obviously you've got to put yourself in those positions to have the conversation. And then if the conversation doesn't happen, then WhatsApp would be the next port of call. Yeah. But I feel like that's, that's what, what we did at the start. So for me, it's not, it's not really as scary as it would be for someone starting out because yeah. that was all that. It's all you did. I mean, I remember we used to call the database to find a seller and then basically how you found a buyer, you call the database and try and put two yeah. and two together. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Okay, so I've got a question for you. So when we talk about real estate and working in real estate and life in real estate, yeah. if I look at your your life outside of work, probably in the last five years, your life has probably been turned upside down for the better, obviously, yeah. having yeah. two kids, yeah. Cody and Kins. Yes. Um absolutely incredible to see as a mother come through and also go down the whole working uh, case trying to create a career and create a family at the same time yeah how have you found that honestly do, do you know what i've thought again i've thought a lot about this lately but i think for me it's obviously it's been one of the best things that, that's ever happened to me but i feel like it has professionally as well mm. because I've I realize that I really need structure. Mm. I really need routine. Um, I wish I could chill a little bit more, but I can't. It's just not really in my makeup. So you're married to as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think you know, with it's made it possible for me to do both because yeah. you know, I the way I think about it and the way it's made it easier for me and mm. less have less mum guilt is go, okay, I drop them at school at 7.30, I come straight to the office, yeah. they're in school till four, you know, if if I get home at six, then I can bath them, give them my time, do their homework, mm. and then I can work after and I'm working. So the things that I do for myself and, and for them, obviously, professionally, I do when they're sleeping yeah or they're doing things like so exercise things like that i'll try and do either when they're eating yeah or when they're asleep i mean early in the morning for me you were probably on our first case studies because i'd yes. never been through this before yeah. where we'd had somebody so close to the business yeah. and they had a baby yeah and i remember when we first started, and this is naive and young of me i used to say when yeah. they had a baby they've left the company yeah. they're, they're going on to become mothers yeah. and when you come back to me and said I want to come back, but obviously I need to pick the kids up. And I, I hadn't had a kid at this point. I think you yeah. had a baby before. I yeah. We'd had a baby. Yeah. And I was like, fucking hell, like, she wants to leave at four. How does that look like yeah. to the rest of the staff? Yeah. And it's probably the best thing we ever done because yeah. not only have you opened up the gateway for other mothers, like mm -hmm. Anisha who's a leader and these yeah. are the people, I know you'll do your job at eight o'clock yeah. or three o'clock. Yeah. So I think the best thing about real estate for working mothers is you are flexible to go and pick kids up too. Knowing yeah. that I know you're working at nine anyway, and you yeah. know you have to put food on the table to provide because you've got yeah. two kids that need yeah, to eat. Exactly. I think it's like anything. There's there's a compromise, yeah. and there are times. I mean, it's only I would say the past couple of weeks where I've had like midweek where I've got, I've gone to get the kids because mm. if I'm if I was training previously or I'm meeting with a client then. Obviously, I can't, and yeah. we're really lucky here to have help. But I just think that that's been like a a relationship that I've built with with you and Carl, yeah. where you have understood me and know me. So yeah. you've also supported and allowed me to do that. Because in my head, it was like no it, it's it's not possible. Yeah. I'm I'm in work till six, and that's that. And I come to terms with it because I thought, okay. My weekends, they've got my full undivided attention. Yeah. I can put them to bed and this is what I'm going to do. And I also didn't know any different because that's what my mum did. Yeah. And my dad worked worked away. Um, so 
yeah, for me, it was like, yeah, yeah I can, I've got that time. Do you think you know? it's made you softer being a parent? Like, like, as in, like, when you're with people, do you feel like you have a different mindset in terms of how you treat people or the same? I wouldn't say softer. I would say I'm more empathetic. I'm so much more empathetic. Like, yeah. It's, do you know what goes from head? And I sound really old saying it, but if I treat somebody bad, male or female, all that goes through my head is that could be my kid yeah, when they're yeah, older and that's somebody's child. And that's weird. But I would have never thought that when we first set the business up, I was a trained killer. Like, yeah. I don't care who you are. I'm going there to make money. And I have this guilt now. Yeah. And to be honest with you, like, I think I can walk through Dubai and no one can say anything bad about me because I don't do anything no. untoward towards yeah. anybody. But even if there's something sitting on the edge of is it right or wrong, the first thing that goes from my head is that's my kids. Yeah. Uh, that potentially could be my kid. Do you think, are you the same? Yeah, I am. I think as well, it's it made me, you know, before trivial things would really get to me or mm -hmm. upset me or I'd think the world was entering for something. And now it doesn't. It's irrelevant, isn't I it? think as long as my kids are okay, yeah. it doesn't matter. Whereas if something happens like to them or yeah. you know, they're sick or whatever, it's like, oh. <gasps> But yeah. so it puts everything else in. And there you're crying about a list and you're like, hang on a minute. Like, as long as my kids are healthy. We'll... It's just like, come on, we're all right. I like, think that comes with age, though, doesn't it? I think that comes with, like, you start to realise what's important in life. Like, I, I think I personally, and you've probably done the same, I've sacrificed a lot in my life for money. Yeah. That's the honest truth. In my yeah, 20s, yeah, I sacrificed true. relationships with people in Coventry, family time with, yeah. for whoever to get financially free. Yeah. And I don't think I would have been able to do what I've done now if I wasn't built that way because I'm yeah. so soft now that I'd probably sacrifice money for family, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's lucky that you've been able to do it that way. We've yeah. been able to do it that way. But it's like my mum sent through a picture of Kinsley this morning when she was around two and she said the same to Rob. And I literally said, "We, you don't get that time back. You know, we've, you've got to really cherish it. And I think that we do, but yeah. working in this industry is about making the times that you do have count. Yeah. And I think that's where for me, having kids has professionally been better for me because when I am working, I feel I'm a lot more productive because I think I don't want to go and talk about where someone's just been at the yeah. weekend, unless it's food. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> unless it's food. I don't really, I'm not that bothered about yeah. going to a club or a bar or unless they serve food. Yeah. When you talk about like children and family and things yeah. like this, like do, do you, it's quite a deep question. Yeah. Do you think about what happens when you're gone with the kids? Like when you're not on this earth? Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. How does that map out in work and investing? Because that's su such a big thing in my head. Do you do you ever think about that? Do your decisions in your life, do, do they, do, do you think about Kinsley and Cody and how that affects them, what you're doing with your money? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know Rob as well. And it's we're always talking about, okay, what next? Yeah. And that's one of the things we're talking about at the moment in terms of you know what investments can yeah. we make um so i think when you buy property when you're working you're thinking about their future being able to send them to the best schools yeah. university if they want to go um you know giving them that great start that i think i i had you know so you had 500 quid birthday money you had a, you had a great start <laughs> I made it last though. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 14 years later, I've still got it. <laughs> but yeah, um, no, definitely. I think it's something, you know, when when your child is born, mm. literally you and thinking about yourself really, your your second or third or fourth definitely. in the list. So definitely, I'm definitely the bottom yeah. of the second order. Okay, so I touched on at the start, okay. dream life. Okay. okay, you are the poster family for me. You know, I always talk about Rob in the meetings. People get yeah. taught, bored of me saying, Rob Kempton, <laughs> Chloe, look at what they're doing. But I seen Rob and I seen you, obviously, before you got married and everything else. I've seen both your journeys. And I remember meeting you, believe it or not, at a nightclub, an outdoor nightclub when you were at Smith and Ken and you just started to buy. And I met Rob when he joined us and he had a thousand pounds in the bank. Yeah. And I fast forward today and I remember you, uh, Buying a house in Jamaica Golf Estates, you'd have to tell me the built up area of the house. It's, 
the a now, now or yeah before? now so now i'm just going to kill me if i get this wrong i think it's just shy of nine thousand yeah. square feet so it's nine thousand yeah. square feet it's got the biggest plot i've ever seen overlooking the uh what hole is it 17 17 yeah. and it's an incredible i remember when the golf was on everybody was in your garden yeah. You were host to people. You had the cinema TV area, yeah. the barbecue. You had the cooks there. And you had this amazing pool. And the kids were all playing. Yeah. And I remember saying to myself, wow, fair play to you guys. And like that, that, that doesn't get said enough because it's amazing. But when you look at that journey and that dream life you, you've created, are you proud of that? Yeah, and I am really proud. But I think there's so many amazing people mm. in the world that I think are more amazing than me <laughs> so yeah I am but I think I'm not and Rob's the same I'm not really the type of person to go oh yeah that we've made it this is it because obviously we've not there's so much more growth there's so much more opportunity when was that time because... then that you said to yourself we're doing well uh, give yeah. me a moment <sighs> I think there's there's multiple moments for me. Okay. Uh, one when when our house is complete. Okay. Uh, Tell me the, the moment. What happened? Uh, I think like because I from the bathroom or oh, maybe my closet. Yeah. The closet. When I went into my closet and it was a bit like oh, wow this is mine, and also like the looking out into the view. Yeah. Um, it's being in my comfy bed and also just. Getting to a stage where you're not, for me, about two years in as well, where I stopped worrying so much about money. And, yeah. you know, you've mentioned this before and we've talked about it a lot. I remember always looking at the menu yeah. and thinking, oh, um, I should, probably shouldn't pick that lobster. because George just tells me off for that now. Yeah, Rob still does it. We go Namos or something. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's way too much food. But I'm that guy that's George. She goes to me. I ordered a steak, either A9 steak. It'd be something stupid, like 200 quid, yeah. 1,000 dirhams. Why are you doing that for? Yeah. Get the sirloin. Anyway, yeah. we've done a few tests and like blind tests and the sirloin tastes better than <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you prefer it. Yeah, that's like me because I actually prefer the thinner steak. Yeah. So, yeah. But um, I think it's just, fee I think, I mean, I wouldn't say we're like completely financially free, but we're not. You're you as know, close as you can get we, to it, yeah, to be honest like, with you. We have... We have a nice life and it's nice to be able to do nice things and enjoy things with our friends. But um, I think a lot of it for me is like who you surround yourself with. Mm. That's you know? what I was about to ask you. You probably answer your own question. Yeah. What's the difference between you that is super successful as a family versus somebody else? I think you, it's again, who you surround yourself with. Mm um mindset mm. consistency and being willing to learn yeah i just think if 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 you do all of those things it might not come overnight yeah. but it you're going to be successful and i just think like working as a team being yeah. willing to to work with people and not being short-sighted which a lot of people are i, I think yeah. instagram has this horrible way yeah. of seeing people now like book private jets, fake private jets to yeah. sit on it. Now I'm 38 and I know everyone knows this because I'm, I'm not shy on Instagram, yeah. but I booked my first ever private jet and took the lads away to the football yeah. and I was mind blown by it. Yeah. I've owned the business 16 years and I've never done that. Yeah. How do these people think that you can be in business for a year or yeah. live in Dubai a year and be an agent and go and do this because they want yeah. instant satisfaction, instant yeah. instant success? Yeah, it just doesn't happen. If, if you look at anyone really successful, they don't just hop out of nowhere and become successful there's things that have gone on behind there yeah. and i think nothing worth having really comes easy i agree you know and people used to say all the time oh, they're so lucky but it's not you create your own luck yeah you've put yourself in a position to receive the luck yeah you know so yeah, yeah no one sees you they talk about the iceberg tip of the iceberg and what goes yeah. underneath yeah. i want to touch on you and rob yeah being with Rob and knowing Rob how I know him is ultra stressful. Yeah. Ultra. If he if he's on if he's on zero on the first of the month, he has a yeah. meltdown. Yeah. But that drive is just insane. Yeah. Obviously, I do tell him to try and calm down, <laughs> but I don't think we're ever going to get to that level of being able to calm down. 
What have you learned from living, being married to probably one of the best agents in the history of Dubai real estate? What have you learned from living with him and being with him? One of the biggest things for me is resilience. Mm. It's Rob will turn negatives into into positives yeah. in the sense of the situation may still be negative, yeah. but he doesn't rest on it. He doesn't really. And I, this was one of the things I was going to say before. You know, I've watched him and Daz, and they might lose like big deals, and they're upset about it for about thirty minutes, and then it's like back to it. Whereas I think again, that's another key to success yeah. it's using those things to drive you forward and not give up yeah um and i think that that is one of the biggest makings of success i would say i've learned that from him not to give up um, it's hard it's, it must be horrible having a partner because i've worked with georgia before and because they're really good at it as well and because yeah. you know when you you've they're trying to tell you something and you're just going to shut up yeah. like because <laughs> yeah. i've been the there me, me, me and carl have been there me and carl like we'll try and teach us something and really yeah. you're looking at it going i don't care what you're saying yeah. even though they're the best at what they do yeah. when it's your partner it must be so frustrating yeah i mean i i respect what he says yeah and i know he is good so uh, i do always try to listen and I like it because Rob will give it to me straight. Yeah. So, and I feel like my family do that as well. So I'm kind of used to <laughs> harshness. Do you know what you but, said a minute ago about uh, Rob and Daz and them forgetting a deal? Do you know one of the biggest traits I think in successful people in the world? To, and I put myself in this trait category. The people that don't overthink yeah. are by far the winners. It's so true. Because their mind depth, now I was celebrated, so I haven't got a high in, intellectual IQ, but I believe yeah. my EQ is high. Because my IQ is so basic, yeah. I don't overthink everything. Like yeah. some people are so intelligent. I've got family members, they've got university degrees, they've got, and they sit there and they think about everything. Decision. Where yeah. the winners, they just do it and figure it out. It. Yeah, exactly. It's pro problem solving, isn't it? It's all it is. And I just think, you know, you it's not the end of the world. Mm. You know, sometimes you're just in your own head and I've I've done this and I, I've said it to you before. I'll I, I have been one of those people that overthinks yeah. because I want it I wanna get it perfect. Mm. And there's no such thing because Isn't perfect it? to you might not be perfect to me and might not be to the next person. But what I always try to do is if I do if I don't want to do something, I try and say yes to it. Yeah. Because I think Chloe get over it. Like there's millions of people in the world doing this. It's a great mindset. It's the only way that you're gonna master it. And I think one of the things, best things for me that I ever did was when you offered me the um lettings and property manager yeah. director role. And you said, Do you want to do it? And I was like, Yeah, I was so like buzzing. But I was like, oh my word, I'm gonna have to public speak. <laughs> I remember <laughs> you like, oh. and then you were like, Chloe, don't worry, we'll teach you. Yeah. And the first time I did it, it was terrible. <laughs> hi, hi, I hi. was like, Chloe, how do you think what that went? What have we hired? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, what how did you think that went? And I went, I'm so sorry, it was terrible. But now you do it for fun. Yeah, but that's again. Like how I overcome that is preparation. Yeah. And I think, you know, you just find your own little ways of. Well, you yeah. definitely have in every role you've took on, you've been a success. Thanks. So wrapping up where we, the, the final bit of the podcast, yeah. the what's next for Chloe. What's next? So you've okay. recently joined the private office, yeah. which for me was a big risk yeah. because let's say how it is. You were in a very well-paid role. Yeah. Definitely. Heading up the learning and development for yeah. the company, mm -hmm. and you've left that to take what the private office associate director role. Yeah, um, do you know what? It just really appealed to me. I obviously Charlie was one of the first people mm. I ever worked with. Got along really well with Charles. Ryan's one of my oldest friends. Uh, obviously, Ted's in the team as well. Mm. Ted's great. Like it's a great team to be a part of. They're all different and they're all really successful. So it's really good to be able to learn from them. But for me, I just want to be the best that I can possibly be. Hopefully earn loads, loads of money. <laughs> um, but yeah, just I just want to be really successful. I've I've thought about it so much. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I said this to you and Carl, I, I didn't want to reach a certain age or reach 40. 
and be like, why didn't I do that yeah. five years ago? You know, what? I, I just know it's time. Yeah. I know I'll be successful at it, but you've got to work at it. And yeah. Come. So I think yeah. with your mindset in the private office, knowing that big deals come, they take yeah. a little bit slower, but you're yeah. resilient and you, you work hard. I think the Sotheby's, Knight Frank, Savills of the market should really be watching their back because we've got the most successful <laughs> associate director female in the history. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on today. Thanks, um, Lou. If you're looking to invest in luxury, the luxury market, Chloe Kempton, her details will be below. And this lady is one to watch in the market. Cheers, guys. Thank you.